Okay, hello everyone and welcome to this webinar brought to you by Traders Log. My name is James Chen. I am the Director of Technical Research and Education at FXDD. Uh, FXDD is a global foreign exchange broker. Now uh, today, as uh, you might know, we are going to be talking about a specific approach I have to trading Forex and uh, this approach pretty much underlies um, all of the strategies that I use on a daily basis, uh, pretty much most of them. So um, hopefully you'll get some uh, good information on that. And if you have any questions during the course of this uh, webinar, please do feel free to type them into the question window uh, and I will get to them as uh, quickly as I can. Okay, so let's get started real quick. Uh, as I always do before I get started, well, first of all, uh, the, today's topic is uh, TPB and the deep pullback. TPB means trend pullback breakout, and the deep pullback is one of my strategies that is uh, that uh, takes advantage of the TPB approach. So uh, I will be talking about all that and providing you with uh, charts as well to illustrate my points. Okay, so uh, before we get started real quick, uh, this is a risk disclaimer. Foreign exchange trading carries a high level of risk that may not be suitable for all investors. Do not invest money that you cannot afford to lose and educate yourself on the risks associated with foreign exchange trading and seek advice from an independent financial or tax advisor if you have any questions. I'm going to give you a few more seconds to read through that and then we will get started. Okay, and also before we get started uh, with the main part of this presentation, I would like to give you a brief introduction to myself. Let me go back real quick. A uh, brief introduction to myself, uh, just in case uh, you're not sure who I am or, or what I do. My name again is uh, James Chen. I am the, I'm not sure why it keeps going forward there. Uh, my name again is James Chen. I'm the Director of Technical Research and Education at FXDD. We are a global foreign exchange broker, as I mentioned. FXDD stands for uh, Foreign Exchange Direct Dealer. And uh, what I do is I do the technical analysis uh, postings as well as uh, take care of education uh, for FXDD. Now, I've been an active Forex trader and analyst since the inception of Retail Forex. Uh, it's a little bit more than 10 years now, uh, and I use primarily technical analysis. And uh, prior to the Forex market, I was trading equities and futures, but since the beginning of uh, Retail Forex, I've pretty much been focused uh, uh, pretty heavily on the Forex market. I am a Chartered Market Technician, or CMT, which is a, a designation for technical analysts, and I'm also a Registered Commodity Trading Advisor, or CTA, registered here in the U.S. with the National Futures Association. I publish daily and intraday currency analysis that you'll find uh, at traderslog.com, as well as on our website at fxdd.com, and uh, I've authored numerous articles in such uh, publications as Forbes.com, Futures Magazine, Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities Magazine, and SFO Magazine. My next article is coming out at FS, uh, SFO Magazine in uh, February. And that will talk about uh, this deep, pull, deep pullback approach that I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, I'm quoted on a regular basis by Reuters News, Dow Jones, Bloomberg, Associated Press, International Herald Tribune, as well as many other media outlets. And I'm the author of two books, Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading and Essentials of Technical Analysis for Financial Markets both of which were published by John Wiley & Sons in the past couple of years, as well as the DVD set, High Probability Trend Following in the Forex Market. Okay, so that's enough about me. Now let's get uh, going quickly with the main part of this presentation. Now, uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, the topic is uh, TPB and the deep pullback. TPB stands for Trend Pullback Breakout. So let's go to uh, this slide right here just to give you uh, an approach. Now this, uh, what I'm going to be showing you now is simply my approach to, uh, my general approach when I take, uh, you know, when I'm looking for trades, looking for opportunities in the markets. Uh, this is my general approach and uh, this, this in and of itself is not a strategy, but I will be showing you a strategy that takes advantage of this particular approach. So uh, this pretty much underlies uh, all of my trading on a daily basis. What I'm looking for first, TPB, is to identify the trend. Okay, so that's the T, identify the trend. Number two, uh, I'm looking for the P, which is watch for a pullback. And then number three, I'm looking for the B, which is trade the breakout. So uh, identify the trend, watch for a pullback, tra trade the breakout. This uh, little uh, chart here, this illustration, 
uh, pretty much um, illustrates the point uh, pretty clearly. Uh, number one down here, you've got the trend. In this case, it's an uptrend. It could very well be a downtrend. Uh, but for illustration purposes, I'm uh, you know making it easier by showing you an uptrend. So we have an uptrend here. Number two, within any uptrend, I'm looking for a pullback. Okay, so uh, within within any trend, uh, the meaning of a trend uh, is really uh, you know a net directional uh, movement uh, you know it, over over time in one direction, whether that be up or down. So uh, there's either a, uh, you know, an uptrend, a downtrend, or no trend. And I'm going to show you exactly how I measure trend uh, in a minute. But uh, within any trend, you're always going to have what we call pullbacks. Pullbacks could be uh, called also retracements or corrections or what have you. Within a trend, we have pullbacks. And same to the, uh, you know, to the downside as, as well as to the upside. So if we have an uptrend, a pullback goes down. If we have a downtrend, the pullback goes up. Okay, so a pullback within uh, an uptrend is called a dip. A pullback within a downtrend is called a rally. Okay, so we have uh, here a pullback. Number three, we're looking for uh, to trade the breakout. Now, uh, as we can see here, this blue line right here represents a breakout. I'm going to show you exactly, uh, you know, on the charts what exact. I mean, what exactly how I measure um, or how I uh, look for breakouts. But uh, this illustrates the point here, the general point that I'm looking for a breakout. Um, so that's represented by the blue line. Once you find your entry, and in this terms, uh, in this uh, case right here, we're looking at the, uh, the blue line as the entry. Once you find your entry, then immediately you could place your stop loss or your risk control. Okay, so that's represented by this red line right down here. Okay, why is that stop loss down there? Simply because um, that is the bottom of the pullback the bottom of the dip, okay? So right underneath the bottom of the dip uh, is where I place my risk management. Why do I place it there? Because uh, if price action goes down and takes me out at that point, basically what the market is telling me is that I'm wrong. So uh, in terms of, uh, you know, that uh, I tried to take uh, advantage of a pullback, but that pullback was not really a pullback. It wasn't, maybe it wasn't the end of the pullback or it's a reversal or, um, you know, it'll pull back later or what have you. But at that point, the market is telling me that I was wrong about looking for this pullback recovery, which is the breakout. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so um, we have a break to the upside here. We immediately define our risk by placing our stop loss, and we have our defined risk right here between the blue line and the red line. Okay, now, once we have defined risk, then we can set our defined reward. And uh, that's extremely important. Now, whether you're looking at a two to one, three to one, one to one, four to one, what have you, uh, ratio between reward and risk, uh, that's what you, that's how you're going to set uh, your reward, okay, or your profit target. So once again, and we want to have, uh, in, especially in trend following situations, we want to have our reward to risk ratio larger, uh, I mean, um, higher than you know, than one to one. Okay, so uh, usually uh, in in some in most of my strategies, I'm looking for at least a two to one or three to one ratio, especially in a trend following situation. Okay, so that's it. We have the defined risk and we have the defined reward, and um, and that is my general approach. And the underlying principle, of course, is risk control through stop loss. Uh, so you control your risk. You have a large, uh, you know, a relatively large reward compared to your risk, and uh, that's my general approach. Okay, let me show you on a real real chart. Uh, now, this is a chart of uh, an hourly chart of gold uh, that was taken a while back. Um, but here we have an uptrend in the form of this uh, uptrend support line, this green line right here. Also, we have this. Uh, I believe this is a 50 period simple moving average, but um, that's another way to uh, set the trend or to look at trend. So we've got uh, a trend line right here that talks about the first part, which is identify the trend. Number two we have a pullback. This pullback comes back to the uptrend support line. Okay, so that's a pullback. Number three, we have a breakout. And this breakout um, breaks, out of, uh, breaks out of this uh, downtrend resistance line. You see this uh, thin blue line right here? That's a downtrend resistance line. We see a break to the upside, and that's my breakout. Okay, and, and some people ask me, why not uh, have it on the break above the, uh, the high? Uh, the high of this, um, you know, before pullback. Well, you could certainly do that, but uh, you know, I like to get into uh, pullback recoveries, uh, 
you know, earlier rather than later. So this, this gives you a good point, a good possible point to get into a, a pullback breakout uh, situation, if that makes sense. Okay, so trend, pullback, breakout. And this is on a gold hourly chart. So that's exactly what I'm looking at. Again, any questions, please let me know. Okay, now uh, let's move forward real quick. Okay, so uh, now that you know my general uh, principle for uh, trading, my general approach, uh, I would like to uh, give you an example of a type of strategy that I use that takes advantage of this approach. So this is what I call the deep pullback. Okay, so a deep pullback. Now, first of all, why are we looking for a deep pullback? Uh, that's a, a big question. A lot of people ask me, you know, what do you mean by deep pullback and why are we looking for a deep pullback? Well, the reason to trade and the reason to look for uh, a deep pullback or any pullback for that matter is because you want to uh, you want to get in at a cost effective location so uh, you know basically what you're saying is if you're in an uptrend and uh, if you want to trade the uptrend and uh, you get in at a cheaper price which is represented by the pullback then uh, you are basically buying something at a bargain you're buying the euro dollar at a bargain if it's in an uptrend Right now it's not, but if it's in an uptrend, uh, then uh, you know what you're doing is you're buying the euro dollar at a bargain. If uh, you know if you're going long, if you're buying. Now uh, in terms of shorting, you know the best place to get into uh, a sell trade or short trade on a downtrend is when price goes up, because hopefully what you want to do is you want to sell high or sell short high and then cover low. Okay, just like in an uptrend, when you're going long, you want to buy low and sell high. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Now, why? Um, Anthony, the question is, are you recording this webinar? Yes, uh, I believe this is being recorded, so you'll be able to uh, take a look later. Okay, uh, at, uh, on uh, Trader's Log. Uh, anyway, so uh, why deep pullback? Well, the deep pullback is very simply, uh, you know, the more it pulls back, the better price you get in. Okay, a shallow pullback in an uptrend, when you go long on a shallow pullback, it only goes down a little bit, right? Now, if you have a deep pullback, it goes down more. So simply, you're getting in at a better price. Now, this is provided that deep pullback does not turn into a reversal. And uh, that's what we have to be careful of. And that's why we have controls in place. We have confirmations in place that uh, you know will help us decide whether or not this is a, a pullback or it's a reversal. Uh, and if, even if it does turn into a reversal, we have our very, very strong risk management in place that will take care of us. Okay, so what is the deep pullback? Okay, this is a three moving average pullback trade. So uh, basically, uh, we have three different moving averages. And I'm going to show you on my charts in a second. Three different moving averages, uh, the 200, the 100, and the 50. I usually trade this on the hourly chart because I found that it works uh, you know, pretty well on the hourly chart. Um, you know, for uh, the major pairs. I, I have uh, several different major pairs. I have also the crosses, et cetera. So uh, some, some crosses, some major crosses. So we have three different moving averages, 200, 100, and 50. These are simple moving averages. Now, we only trade with a trend when the three are in correct order. And this is what I call COMA, C-O-M-A, correct order of moving averages. It's a funny acronym. But uh, you know, it helps you remember it. Now, uh, coma is uh, you know simply in an uptrend. Uh, correct order moving averages, or coma, is uh, the longest term moving average on the bottom, and then above that is the middle moving average, uh, and then the shortest moving average on top. Now, in a downtrend, it's simply the opposite. We have uh, the longest period moving average on the top, followed lower by the uh, followed below that by the um, the next. Uh, shorter moving average and then follow uh, at, you know, the very bottom by the, uh, the shortest term moving average. So that's the correct order. If there is not correct order, if there's no correct order of moving averages, then we are not in a trend, okay, uh, you know, according to the strategy. We are not in a trend and we don't even touch it. We don't even look further at it. Okay, so if we're not in correct order, then we move on and we look at another currency pair or another instrument. Now, we enter only when the stochastics pull back okay, uh, coincides with the price pulling back to the 100 moving average or more, the middle moving average. Okay, and I'll show you exactly what that means on, on the charts. We have our stop loss at the last swing because, once again, 
if uh, you know in an uptrend, if you're going long, if uh, price action breaks down below your uh, your last swing, that means the market is telling you that uh, your trade was wrong. Your your pullback um, it was not really a pullback or it was a premature pullback, and uh, you're wrong. So uh, you have your risk management to take care of that. So uh, that's where you place your stop loss. And then what I like to do is I, t I like to target two to three times my risk or better. Okay, and then you trail your stop loss. Uh, you can trail your stop, stop loss to lock in break even and further profit. So let me let me show you real quick uh, what this means. Let me go to my charts real quick, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. Okay, and these I, I set this up beforehand. Um, this is an hourly chart of British pound against the U.S. dollar. Okay. Um, let me take a look here. Okay, this is a, an hourly chart of um, British pound against U.S. dollar. Now, I'm looking for deep pullbacks. Once again, in an, uh, first thing I do is I look for the trend. Okay, so let me pull my crosshairs up here real quick. Do you see here, this is the 200 period simple moving average in blue. And then in uh, sort of dark red, we have the 100 period simple moving average. And then in yellow up here, we have the... 50 period moving average, which is the shortest period moving average. Now, the correct order or coma of these uh, moving averages is correct for an uptrend right here. Okay, as you can see, they're in correct order. Over here, they're not in correct order. Over here, they're not in correct order. Okay, now when you look at a downtrend, you take a look here. Starting from right about here, it's in a correct order of moving averages. Okay, right here. And it's simply 200 period on top, followed below that by the 100 period, and then the 50 period below that. So that's correct order for a downtrend. So that's number one. So over here, we have a correct order, okay, and over uh, for an uptrend. And then over here, we have a correct order for a downtrend. Now what do we do? Okay, second, I'm looking for a deep pullback only, okay? That, that's the name of this uh, strategy, and that's exactly what I'm looking at, looking for. So uh, deep pullback needs to go to the 100 period simple moving average, the middle moving average, or more. In an uptrend, what does that mean? That means that you're looking for uh, the price to go at least to the 100 period simple moving average, this middle one, or lower. In a downtrend, I'm looking for price to go at least to the 100 period simple moving average or higher. Okay, so that's simply what that means. Uh, now, a lot of people ask me, what if it goes beyond the, uh, the blue line, the, the 200 period simple moving average? Well, I'll still take the trade. Okay, that's a very deep pullback. That's usually represented by a very deep pullback. But uh, you know, as long as my other uh, signals are in place, uh, I'll still uh, you know take uh, usually take that opportunity. Now, okay, so number one, correct order moving averages. Number two, we need price to at least go to the hundred period uh, simple moving average or more. Now, number three is we are looking for uh, the stochastics to cross the overbought or oversold line. Okay, I'm using uh, slow stochastics. I happen to be using an 833, uh, 833 setting for slow stochastics. Now, uh, if you take a look here, what I'm looking for in an uptrend, and please listen carefully to this because uh, some people get confused by this, but in an uptrend, we are looking for a cross above oversold, which is at the 20 line, okay? Now, uh, in the downtrend, we are looking for a cross down below overbought, which is the 80 line. So we're looking for stochastics in a downtrend to be above the oversold line and then cross and close below it. In an uptrend, we're looking for, um, we're looking for the stochastics to cross up above oversold at 20 and close above it. Okay, what do, what do I mean by close? Well, uh, you know, basically what I mean is that if you have a candle and you, you have a stochastics here and it it's, looks crossed up, okay, sometimes what will happen is it's going to move up and down, uh, you know, above and below uh, that, uh, that line, okay, whether it be the oversold or overbought. So it will go up and down until it actually closes. And if that closes, close represent a, represents a cross above this line in an uptrend or below this line in a downtrend, then at that point, I'm going to take that trade, okay? So uh, this is what we call, you know, we have the TPB. First, we have trend, then we got pullback. In this case, it's a deep pullback. Then we got the breakout, and this is the breakout I'm talking about right here, 
Okay, so this breakout uh, above over uh, oversold. Now you may ask me, what about this one over here? It also did the same thing. Well, if you take a look at my crosshairs here, it did do the same thing. However, up here, it wasn't at that time. It wasn't a deep pullback. It didn't pull back to the 100-period simple moving average more. Okay, now you take a look at this uptrend right here. Now. Uh, let me see. Okay, so you take a look. You got a, a pullback here. You got a pullback here. But I'm not taking those. Okay, I want to be able to. I want my strategy to give me solid rules as to when to get in, when to get out, uh, etc. Uh, so I'm not going to be taking these. Although some of these may have been good trades. You know, let's take a look over here. Uh, this, uh, you know, let me see. This might, This would have been a good trade. It pulls back a little bit here. But how do you know that's uh, that's going to stop or or what have you? So. Uh, you know, you have a pullback here. That could have been a great trade to the short side, okay, to the downside. But I'm not going to take it because, uh, you know, according to my strategy, which I've tested, which I have experience with, um, you know, this particular strategy that I'm using at this time, uh, it's telling me that uh, it doesn't fulfill the requirements for getting into a trade, and therefore I'm not going to get into a trade. Okay, now. How do you, uh, so once again, okay, so uh, how do you set your stop loss and your, um, and your profit target according to this particular strategy. Well, look, uh, you get in, once again, you get in on when it crosses, so we have a downtrend right here. We get in when it crosses below, well, first of all, we have the uh, correct order moving averages, and then we have a pullback that goes beyond the uh, 100 pair simple moving average, okay, and then we have a cross below. You get in somewhere around here, okay. Now, where do you place your stop loss? You place your stop loss right above. You could be, you know, a few pips above or, or what have you, um, just to give a little room there. But uh, you put it right above that pullback because think about it. When you get in here short, okay, where my crosshair is right now, you get in here short. You put your uh, risk management there, okay. So you're looking to go in short now. If the market comes up and takes you out, what is the market telling you that that pullback was not a correct pullback to get into? Okay, and then you're out with a relatively small loss. Now, uh, once you have your stop loss in and your entry, you have defined risk, and that's very, very important. That was what your risk is. Okay, so uh, if you remember the TPB, um, the TPB diagram, uh, it shows you, you know, you have your defined risk, and then from there you can uh, set your defined reward. And what is your defined reward? Well, really, uh, it's according to how you want to play it in terms of, uh, you know, uh, your reward to risk ratio. How much more do you want your reward to be than your risk? So, uh, let's say I set it at two to one. Okay, uh, two to one is two. Uh, my reward or my profit uh, will be twice my risk. Okay, so let's say I have that. Well, we we have a lot more here. Uh, if you take a look here, if you went short here, uh, we have a lot more than two times uh, here. But you know you have to set your parameters because not always will you get great moves like this. For example, over here, you do not have a great move. You have a short, okay, and then uh, you could possibly get two times risk there, uh, and and maybe not, okay. So uh, um, you know you want to be able to balance your reward to risk ratio and your percentage win ratio. What exactly does that mean? If I have time, I'm going to go through uh, positive expectancy, how to measure your expectancy, and how to balance your reward to risk ratio and your percentage win ratio. What does that mean? If you set your, let's say you set your reward to risk ratio at one to one, that means that uh, your risk, uh, you set your risk, or whatever your risk is, your reward is going to be exactly the same. Okay, so that means you have to win more than 50% of the time in order to make money. Okay. Now, um, if you have, uh, so your percentage win, but your percentage win ratio is going to be better than if you set your reward to risk ratio higher. Why? Well, it's a lot easier for price to move one times your risk than it is two times your risk or three times your risk or four times your risk. Okay, so, uh, you know, if you're looking for big moves, chances are your percentage win will be pretty low, okay? Because you don't, uh, how often do you get those big moves that you can really uh, take advantage of? Less, but once you do get those big moves, they're very, very profitable for you. But then you're gonna probably be taking lots of losses, uh, lots of smaller losses uh, along the way. So, uh, you know, reward to risk ratio is very high. 
then your percentage win ratio goes down. If your reward to risk ratio is very low, then your percentage win ratio goes up and you just have to find a balance. Now what I tend to do is I'm looking for mostly, um, uh, between, like I mentioned, t between two to one and three to one. So twice my risk uh, or three times your risk or what have you. Okay. Okay, now uh, we have this, um, okay. So we have this, uh, uh, now, now we have everything set up. So, uh, you know, you have your uh, defined risk. You, uh, let's say right here you have your defined risk, uh, and then you, you have your defined reward, <coughs> and then, uh, you know, it conforms to the, the strategy now uh, of the, the TPB approach. Now let me just show you a few examples here. So, uh, you know, over here, we see over here, okay, you take a look. Um, let me uh, move my crosshairs a little bit. Okay, you have correct order moving averages right here, okay? And you have a pullback that goes to the 100 period simple moving average or more. This would have been a great trade, right? Yes, it would have. You would have made a lot of money. You could have made a lot of money if you went long there. Okay, now, the problem here is it doesn't conform to my methodology. We don't have a pullback that goes, that crosses above oversold. And therefore, I'm not gonna take that, uh, I'm not gonna take that trade. Now, you may say, you know, you missed a great trade there. Absolutely, I missed a great trade. But am I going to worry about it? No, I'm not going to worry about it because I, you know, I don't, I don't want to bring my emotions into trading. Yes, I'm going to miss great trades. I'm going to also get, uh, you know, great trades. Uh, but I want my strategy to give me solid rules to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, whether to en enter or exit into trades. And uh, I have the luxury not to trade. So, uh, you know, so this fact here, that it pulls back, it doesn't pull back below here, uh, for me, just means that uh, I'm not going to take the trade and, uh, you know, fine, whatever happens, happens. Uh, I have my, you know, I've tested my strategy, I've had, I have experience with my strategy, and the fact that it didn't, uh, didn't give me a good uh, entry into this particular trade, uh, I'm not even going to worry about it uh, for, for one second. Okay. Now, you take a look here, uh, and there are plenty of pullbacks here, but I'm not going to take these either. Now, I'm going to take this one right here. Why? Correct order moving averages. It pulls back below uh, to the 100 period simple moving average or more, in this case below. And then I have a cross, just like I just showed you. You get in there, you put your risk management under there, you put your um, reward to risk ratio according to what it is, two, you know, two times, one, one and a half times, three times, whatever you want. Um, and then here's the same thing, okay? We have a cross above, uh, a cross above there. And uh, you know everything's in place. That's an okay trade too. Um, over here, we see that uh, we are in correct order moving averages as well. Okay, if you take a look right here where my crosshairs are, correct order moving averages, it crosses up above the stochastics. Uh, it goes way below. So as I mentioned, you know, uh, people ask me if it goes to the 200 period or more or lower, are you going to take that long trade? And uh, I say yes. Okay, so we get into that trade right there. Uh, and then uh, here you have lots of crosses, okay? So you're not going to take any trades here. This, these are all crosses uh, of the moving average. We don't have the correct order. Okay, so, uh, and then over here, it starts coming back into correct order. Uh, it actually comes back right here, okay? Would this been a great trade to get into? Yes. Okay, so uh, it's, a, it's a deep pullback or, you know, a, a, a high rally to get into a short trade. We've got the cross of the stochastics, but we do not have correct order moving averages. Therefore, I'm not taking that trade. Um, I missed another good trade. Right, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking to find the highest probability trades I can. Okay, so now we move down. We've got nothing here. It crosses back into correct order moving averages here. Okay, uh, there's a pullback here. I didn't take it. Pull back up here. Okay, and I take this one. Okay, this is a very nice one, a really, really good one. Okay, and then it goes down. Uh, you know, I make I make my risk reward there. Uh, here, also correct order, same thing. Goes beyond the uh, 200 period, etc. I'm, I'm sorry, 100 period. It goes above that. I go short. Um, you know, this is not so great because we don't have a lot of uh, uh, follow through there. But you know, you'll find with the strategy that you get the direction uh, often very right. Uh, a lot of the times. However, uh, depending on your risk-reward ratio, again, that will affect your percentage win ratio. Okay, now here's another one. This is a, this is a live chart, so 
Um, here's another one right here. Uh, you have correct order right here for an uptrend. Uh, you know, although at this point you don't know that it's not going to continue as an uptrend, but uh, you get in here. This is a good uh, example here, and you've got uh, a little bit there to go. And then it crosses here, so we're not in correct order here. Uh, we're not in correct order here, and then now we have downtrend, but since then nothing has happened. Okay, so we don't have any opportunities here. Let's take a look at Dollar Swiss. Okay, uh, Dollar Swiss. This could be. Right here, you see, uh, this is the um, most recent dollar Swiss uh, hourly chart. Right now, we are at a critical juncture. It go, it, uh, you know, we are in uptrending mode. Uh, we have the correct order moving averages for an uptrend. Okay, it went to the 100 period or or lower. Okay, now we look like uh, right over here. It has not yet crossed above, but uh, once it does, that could be a potential opportunity to go long on the continuation of that trend. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Okay, now here's a good one as well. We have correct order moving averages for an uptrend. Okay, I, I didn't uh, point this out before, but we have a correct order of moving averages for an uptrend uh, right here. Okay, now we have the stochastics hit this uh, oversold line and then move up. Now that also to me represents this deep pullback. So not only if it comes back and, and hooks, uh, you know, and crosses above the oversold, but if it touches uh, the 20 line uh, and then it moves up, then that, then that for me is uh, another indication of possible uh, deep pullback trade. Okay, so it, it, it does this and it closes above the 20. Now, uh, right here, we have a good potential move here and you get in right around here, which is a really, I'm sorry, even earlier, right around here, which is a really good place to get in, okay? Um, now, uh, you have your stop loss right under here, right under this last low, and then, uh, you know, that easily hits all of your risk reward targets. Um, okay, and going back in time a little bit on the dollar, uh, dollar Swiss, you know, lots of crosses here. We're not looking at that. Uh, here's one trade, not a great trade, again, because not a lot of uh, follow-through. We got the direction correct, but uh, not a lot of follow-through there. Here's a good one. Okay, now, this is what sometimes happens. So you got correct order moving averages here. We've got a deep pullback that goes beyond the 100 period simple moving average. Now, we see a cross up above, uh, above the uh, oversold line. Okay, so everything's good. We get in. Okay, immediately it goes down. It does not take out our stop loss, though. Okay, because uh, if it did take out my stop loss, then obviously I'm wrong. But uh, it did it. Okay, so it moves down and then it continues and it hits our risk reward ratio. Okay, so that, that's really good. Now uh, here, same thing, uh, correct order for an uptrend. Um, we see the same thing here, cross up above, cross up above, and then we see uh, you know, a very good move there as well. Okay, this did not hit my 100 period simple moving average. It would have been a good trade if it did, um, but uh, not only did it not hit my simple moving average, 100 periods of moving average, but uh, also the stochastics uh, was shy of the oversold. Okay. Okay. So that's uh, that's basically that. And again, you know, if you take a look here, a possibility for some type of a trade uh, within the next couple hours here on Dollar Swiss. Okay. Let me show you a couple others. Um, this is Aussie dollar hourly chart once again. Same thing here. This is a good one. Okay, uh, a pullback, deep pullback, correct order moving averages, deep pullback above the uh, 100 pair simple moving average, go short on this cross, and then we've got good risk reward right there. Same thing uh, over here. Um, let me see. This is, uh, this, you know, it went to the 100 pair simple moving average. We had correct order, but uh, we didn't have the stochastics line up right over here, so that didn't work. Okay, uh, now this one, uh, this one did. Now, the problem here is, are you going to take this? Is it deep enough? Okay, it went to, uh, uh, it, it just was shy of the 100 period simple moving average. Well, if you're going to be very strict about your strategy, which you probably should be, then perhaps this is not a trade you want to get into. Okay, however, it turned into uh, one of the best trades available. But that depends on how, how uh, strict you are in your rules, which uh, you probably should be, especially if you're new to Forex or new to trading. Okay, and here, same, same type of thing. Not a great trade, but uh, it hits your risk reward uh, nonetheless. Uh, we, have an, uh, we have an uptrending uh, 
correct order moving averages. And then we have a cross down here, cross up. Over here, we get in, we got our stop loss, and we got a good move right there. Um, here would have been a good one, but we have crossed moving averages. We don't have the correct order moving averages, okay? And since then, nothing has really happened. Okay, last, uh, last chart I wanted to show you before getting to some other stuff is um, this is the uh, Dollar Canada, okay? The U.S. dollar against Canadian dollar. Uh, hourly chart, once again. So uh, here, uh, correct order moving averages. We have a pullback move. Uh, pullbacks, uh, pulls back to the 100 period or more, and then we have this cross up above. We get into that trade. It's an okay trade. does a lot of choppy stuff, but uh, still an okay trade. We've got the general direction correct. Um, same thing over here. We see the same thing here, and that's a good trade. From there, although there are lots of good potential trades, in hindsight over here, it didn't conform to my rules, and therefore I'm not taking them. Okay, so uh, here it turns into a downtrend. Okay, a downtrending, correct order moving averages, and then here we have, um, you know, a pretty good move right here as well, okay, to go short. Uh, and then since then, it's turned into an uptrend. However, we don't have anything good as of yet, according to the strategy. Okay. So hopefully you guys understood that. Let me, uh, let me take a look at this, uh, the questions here. So your entry is when stochastics is back into 20 or 80, yes? Okay, my exact entry is in an uptrend, if you're going long, is when the stochastics cr uh, crosses above the 20 line. It crosses and closes above the 20 line, okay? In, um, in a downtrend, my uh, exact entry is when uh, the stochastics crosses and closes below the 80 line. Okay, so it should, uh, stochastics, uh, once again, in an uptrend, the stochastics should have been underneath oversold or at oversold, at the 20 line, or underneath the 20 line, and then crossing above. In a downtrend, the stochastics should have been above the 80 line or at the 80 line, and then crossing down. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, and there are many different ways to uh, exit besides uh, besides what I just talked about, uh, which is uh, setting your risk-reward ratio. An another way to do it, and let me just show you this real quick. Another way to do it is, uh, you know, you set your, uh, you know, like I said, this is all setting your risk, okay, uh, so your risk-reward. But optionally, what you could do is you could move your stop loss. So let's say um, you get in, you have to find risk, and then uh, price moves in your direction. At some point, Let's say at one times risk, you can move your uh, stop loss to break even, okay? And there, there you're basically, you know, you're not going to lose any money on this trade. So uh, you move it to break even. If it continues to go in your favor, let's say it goes to two times your uh, risk, okay, price goes to two times your risk, then you can move your stop loss to one time your risk, which is, uh, you know, w when you're in profit, if that makes sense. So uh, one times your risk uh, when you're uh, in profit, and therefore you've, you've uh, locked in one times your risk, your original risk, okay? So that's another way to do it. Now, another, yet another way to, uh, to do it is to uh, enter a trade with smaller positions and stagger your exits. So let's say uh, price goes in your favor. Uh, okay, so once it goes to one times your original risk, um, you can take off a third of the position. Now, once it goes to two times your original risk, then you could take off and take profit on the second position. And then maybe you could run the third position for, uh, for the third, for three times your risk, okay? So if you have any questions about that, please let me know. So that's how we uh, size our positions and take our profits. What I like to do, and it's very important here, is I like to limit my uh, my my trading, you know, the dollar amount of my risk uh, to uh, two percent of my overall trading equity. Okay, below the two percent or below. So if I have ten thousand dollars that I'm trading, I like to make my defined risk, my overall defined risk for every for as on a single trade uh, at two percent or below. So that would be, if I have ten thousand dollars in account, that would be two hundred dollars is my um, risk. Okay, on on one particular trade. So. Um, so there, I mean, the, the real name of the game here is preserving your capital and, uh, you know, trying to, trying to catch the big moves. Okay. 
Now, um, before we go, I, I wanted to quickly give you uh, this establishing expectancy formula. And this is very important. Why is this important? Well, you know, this is really the basis of how you become consistently profitable trading in, in any market. It doesn't matter which market. So uh, as, and when you establish expectancy, how do you do this? And what does it mean? Well, first of all, uh, you need to make a lot of... Uh, uh, trades. If you have a specific st uh, strategy, whether it's a deep pullback strategy like I showed you or your own strategy, it doesn't matter. Uh, you, you need to test it over time and uh, you need to keep a trading journal. And this trading journal should include, you know, uh, how much you made on each, uh, on a, uh, you know, each trade, how much uh, or how much you lost on each trade, uh, as well as your reasons for getting into a trade, um, and the date and time uh, of entry and exit, uh, etc. You should have all of this for each trade that you make. Once you have a lot of trades and you can see exactly what you made or lost on each one, <coughs> then you can establish expectancy. What does this mean? This is a simple formula. Okay, this is very, very easy. E, which is expectancy, and this should tell you how you're expected to do over time with your, with your trading. And you should keep uh, uh, doing this formula you know, um, over time. Uh, and you, you could actually do it in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you could, uh, you know, set up your wins, losses, etc., and then automatically have your expectancy um, show up uh, in, in one of the cells it's, it's with this very simple mathematical formula. Okay, so uh, you establish your expectancy by uh, this formula. E is expectancy, and E equals 1 plus W over L times P minus 1. What does that mean? 1 plus average winning trade uh, divided by average losing trade. Take all that, you times P, which is your percentage win ratio, and then you minus one. Okay, so an example here. Let's say you have 10 trades. Okay, I, I really don't think, uh, this is not a good example because there are only 10 trades here, but let's say you had hundreds of trades, which is even better. But for purposes of keeping this math simple, let's go with 10 trades right here. Okay, 10 trades, six winning trades and four losing trades. That's from your journal. Your percentage win ratio, or P, will then equal 6 over 10 or 60%. If you have six winning trades, okay, of, uh, you know, of the 10 trades, these six winning trades uh, were uh, altogether $2,400 in total profit. Therefore, your average winning trade, or W, is simply the 2400 divided by your six winning trades, which is $400. Now, if you have uh, these four losing trades, you lost a total of $1,200. Okay, so uh, then your average losing trade is, or L, is 1,200 divided by 4, which is equal, equals $300. You plug all this into the expectancy formula, and you get 0.4 or 40%. The most important thing here is you want to have a positive expectancy. You do not want to have a negative expectancy. If you have a negative expectancy, that means you're losing money, uh, and you're, not, you're, you're consistently unprofitable. If you have a positive expectancy, that means you are consistently profitable, at least for the, the period of time that you, uh, you, know, you had all your trades entered in. Now, 40% um, is pretty good. It's pretty good. What does this mean? A positive 40% expectancy means your strategy returns 40 cents per dollar over time, which is very, very good. So, um, and that's the type of thing that you want. So, once again, you have to balance your reward to risk ratio and your uh, percentage win ratio and come up with a way to trade that gives you a, a consistent positive, high positive expectancy. And that's really the key to playing this game here uh, or, or trading in general. So uh, you need to establish expectancy. You need to have a strategy and a risk management profile that helps you establish a high positive expectancy. Okay, um, let me take a look here. Some questions. Do you have to with the computer all the time? Um, or software to identify when the rules align? You know, I'm, uh, I, I'm actually having this um, programmed into an uh, EA, an expert advisor. So you could either, I mean, I've, up till now I've been doing it manually, which means I'm looking at the computer. Okay, and I'm, I'm on the uh, charts all day long, pretty much every day, every trading day. So uh, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking for setups, uh, whether it's this strategy or some of my other strategies that I use. Uh, I'm looking for uh, setups all day long. Now, uh, you could do that, or you could try to put this into some type of uh, automated strategy, which this is conducive to doing. 
So, uh, you know, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm doing this as we speak. I'm uh, trying to uh, put this in, in motion as an expert advisor. What is your stochastic set at? Uh, again, uh, th this particular one, you know, I set it at 833. I've tried different ones. It doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, I've tried 533. I've tried 1433. I've tried 833. And, uh, you know, most of the time I'm using 833. Just, uh, you know, it, it, again, not a huge difference, but, uh, you know, it seems to work uh, pretty well. Let me take a look here. Okay, and yeah, another question about uh, the recording. Um, I can't actually email you the recording, but uh, you'll be able to find it, I believe, on traderslog.com. You'll be able to find the recording uh, probably sometime tomorrow or so. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, I had some principles of high probability trading, but I, I don't think I'm going to go through those um, right now. And I think that if there are no more questions, I think that uh, might be it. Now, if you want to have a, a copy of these slides, uh, please feel free to email me and uh, at uh, jchen at fxdd.com, jchen at fxdd.com. So, um, you know, feel free to, uh, to send me an email, ask for the slides, I'll be more than happy to send it to you. Um, John, is this strategy your most successful one that you have used? I, I have a lot of strategies that, that I use, um, you know, uh, this is uh, one of the uh, more successful ones, yes. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's the most successful, but it's one of the more successful ones. And I, I, I present strategies all the time. So, uh, you know, if you come to FXDV and listen to my uh, webinars, then you can certainly do that. Okay, um, have you tried on a shorter coma? Shorter correct order moving averages, KK. Uh, uh, no, but uh, you could certainly experiment. I mean, see what works for you. Uh, you know, I tried uh, a couple other uh, combinations in the past a uh, long time ago, but uh, I found that these work very well. Uh, the ones I, the 200, 150. Okay, great. So uh, thank you, everyone, for your time today. Uh, take a look at the recording. Email me if you have any questions, and uh, have a great day. Thank you very much.